Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'm talking Tyro 119. Now this is similar to the 129 in that it's a bigger build. This is a six inch drone, six inch props. And uh, you see that right there? That's GPS. So yeah, you can build a GPS drone for under $120. That is something. Look at this. Uh, put it together. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this drone, and you can kind of decide if it's the right one for you. Stay tuned. <laughs> Real quick, let's talk about some of the things that I like about this drone. And we're going to get it up in the air, and you can see it flying. Um, one, I like these motors. These big, beefy 2407s do a nice job of pushing these 6-inch six props, right? Um, and if you're not sure what uh, you know the big deal is, 6-inch props, are they really any bit bigger? Um, yeah, look at that. right? That's my 5-inch. right? That's a 5-inch prop. Uh, we're looking at my uh, DJI-built quad here. Uh, but yeah, six inches definitely a little bit bigger. Uh, but really, kind of the the thing that sets this apart is really the low cost and that GPS unit on top. Now, um, a lot of people don't think that uh, FPV drones and GPS go together. Well, they can, and it's not just like a return to home safety feature. It can be used for that, but you'll also be able to get important data from the drone that you couldn't otherwise. Things like you know, more accurate position, obviously, GPS does that, but also things like speed and, you know, other location important data. But uh, yeah, I like it. Let's get it out in the field and you can see it in action. Okay, so we got the Tyro 119 up in the air, and as you can see, we got some snow on the ground. So I'm not really going to push it too much, but I want to point out a few things. Now, I'm starting out uh, here in angle mode, and it was just acting a little bit goofy. Usually I like to uh, start that way, uh, but you'll see as soon as I switch it into acro mode, it's just much easier to fly. Things get smoother. There we go. Flip the switch um, right there, and uh, now we're good. Right? Uh, I think I just probably had to calibrate the gyro. Should have done that, but uh, didn't before I took off. Uh, you'll notice a couple of things that are different in the OSD now. I turned these features on in the upper right hand corner. You'll see that little arrow uh, and then uh, a number with an, with an M, right? That's the distance and the direction from my takeoff point, right? My home point. So you can see that I'm about 28 meters, 30 meters, uh, 40 meters away from home, and it's showing me which direction I took off from so that if I was to fail safe, it's going to fly back to that spot. Now you can set up, you know, if it flies up or down or how it responds um, and exactly goes back to that point to that point. Now, uh, just under the distance, you see uh, numbers with a K. Those are, that's knots, that's airspeed. Um, and uh, I noticed that I think I got up to like 69 knots. That's almost 80 miles an hour. Now, I was not really pushing this quad, uh, but it can move, right? I'm flying on a 4S battery. So keep that in mind. Yeah, could this hit 100 miles an hour? I wouldn't doubt it. Um, that's not my style. I'm not a racer, uh, but maybe you are. Um, again, I don't know that this is really a racing drone per se, but it is a fun FPV flyer. You can see uh, this is the footage coming from the camera on board, right? I'm not running a run cam or anything like that. This is just the standard Caddx, um, what is that, the Turbo. It's a 1200 TVL line camera. Really a pretty nice picture. And the VTX is pretty darn powerful, so you can see I'm not getting a ton of breakup. So really everything here is is pretty solid, pretty good. Uh, other things you see in the OSD, I've got uh, number of satellites, 13. Uh, you do have to wait for it to get, I think, 9 or 10 satellites before you can actually take off. That's kind of a safety feature. Um, and then below that, you can see the RSSI. I'm using an XM Plus receiver, which, you know, that does the trick. Now, if I was really going to be serious about this quad, I'd probably put Crossfire or an RM9 on there. And you know, I think this just really makes a nice long range quad, right? Just kind of take it and cruise. That's kind of what I'm doing here. These are mo this is mostly a cruising flight. Now, yeah, I'm doing some flips and some rolls just because, well, it's fun and I want to make sure that it can do that. But uh, yeah, overall, I was quite pleased with how this thing performed. 120 bucks for a GPS drone. 
It's a freaking steal. Yeah, I I jump on this. If you're thinking about building a drone, I do really like the Tyro series uh, for building drones. They're you know they're great values. The 129. Uh, you know, I turned the 79 into a whoop. I wasn't a big fan of the uh, toothpick, the 69, although I believe they're coming out with a new toothpick. So, all right, so I'm going to do a really quick build tutorial and then uh, show you how to set it up in Betaflight. All right, step one in putting this thing together is putting the bottom plate in place. The longest screws are going to go in the center. Um, then you've got the uh, lock nuts on the sides. Once you have that in place, you're going to go ahead and put your motors in. Don't put in all the screws. And then you're going to go ahead and put the standoffs in the center and throw your ESCs in place so that you can get ready to uh, solder. Now, you're just going to solder the end cap. Um, the uh, motor wires and the battery lead. Uh, make sure that you have the nuts in the right positions. You'll notice they're clockwise and counterclockwise. That's just the nuts. You can change everything in BL Heli if you need to in terms of motor direction. So if you don't set it up quite right, that's okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pre-tin along the sides there where the motors are going and the motor wires. Um, you can see I've done that. Now I'm not a soldering expert. Um, but if you haven't soldered before, you're going to want to practice before you try this one. Then you can go ahead and uh, get all the connectors ready on the flight controller. They plug into place. That's what really makes this Tyro build. And all Tyro builds are really pretty good. Now, you do have to solder here for your receiver. Uh, I soldered those two little pads there. It's kind of hard to see because I'm using an XM+. Plus. Uh, different receivers will solder differently. Now, I can go ahead and put the standoffs in to get my flight controller in place and then i can go ahead and add my vtx on top of that you're going to add those little nuts um, in place and then i'm going to go ahead and add the uh, connector uh, for the antenna and i'm going to put the standoffs on here standoffs go into place twist them in uh, I'm going to have to add my receiver right on top there. Now, depending on what you use, uh, depends on what you want to do. Now, I, I'm going to run the wires out the back of this little 3D mount, and I've added my little TBS-style antenna on the back, uh, just like so. Then I put my camera in place. Um, you know, I put in one screw to start, and I'm going to add two uh, after I kind of get it how I want. Um, you got that MXC connector. Now I'm going to go ahead and bind it to my radio. And then top plate goes on. GPS goes on top. Um, that's how I mounted it. Uh, notice the standoffs there for the camera. Again, you can fix the angle how you like. Uh, but that is basically how it's going to go. I'm mounting the battery on the bottom because I have the GPS on the top. I added that little piece of rubber there to keep it uh, in place. Now make sure you get all the screws tightened add all the motor screws then you're going to go ahead and set it up in uh, beta flight and bl heli uh, battery strap is going to go there and notice i do have the three screws um, i didn't start that way but uh, that's how i finished now you can see here i've got my dji fpv quad uh, with my good venture motor uh, on there and it is Gosh, I love this thing. Uh, I was just actually just flying it this morning, and uh, it's a lot of fun, but uh, you'll have to wait for a, a video to see that in action. Let's go ahead and check out Betaflight. At uh, the settings you're going to want to do, um, you know, the ports, we got a serial RX on UART 2, uh, the GPS on UART 1, all that should be set up for you. Config is, uh, you know, nothing you really need to do here if you want to go ahead and give it a name. Uh, we're going to call this the half chrome Tyro 119. Um, you know, everything else here, like I said, is set up. Uh, the only things I generally will change are here. The air mode, if it's not on, or the RX lost, you can change the tone if you want. But um, that's useful, right? You can turn the uh, ESCs into beepers. Let's go ahead and save and do that. Okay. Battery and power, I didn't do anything here. Uh, PID tuning, uh, again, I'm not changing anything with my PIDs. Uh, although, I haven't flown it yet, so uh, first you want to do that. PIDs are going to matter depending on what size battery you're going to fly. Uh, the receiver, just make sure that your receiver uh, is set up. I have RSSI and AUX12, that's because I'm using an XM+. Plus. Um, then modes, uh, this is important. Um, go ahead and uh, set your arm and your angle switch. Uh, you want a GPS rescue on some auxiliary. I put mine on four, um, and then I have a beeper. Uh, in this case, for me, it's on aux five. Um, motors. Uh, ah, we do have to check the motors. So we're going to go ahead and um, 
to do that, make sure you don't have the props on, then you're gonna go ahead and run the master here. Um, you're gonna have to plug her in. And then you can run the master here. You'll hear the motor spin up. And you can check that they're moving in the right direction. So as I check my motors, I have to fix motors one and two, they're moving in the wrong direction, um, which is a bummer, but not a big deal. Um, OSD, you can set what you want. Um, I highly recommend your RSSI value and the main battery voltage, um, super important. GPS speed, GPS stats, that's up to you. Warning, super important. I also like average cell voltage, and you can kind of move these things around where you think are most appropriate. Try just moving like that. All right, a lot of this stuff is important and good to know. Oh, this is I like right up here. Okay, all my GPS info up at the top. All right, so now I've got that how I like it. Click save. Black box, it don't do anything. CLI, if you want to check stuff. But this is important. Get enable. Uh, expert mode and we'll go to the fail safe to uh, you know, gotta go to this fail safe to turn the GPS on um, and right over here uh, GPS rescue you want to make sure that that's on and fail safe only save and reboot all right so I went ahead and uh, reversed my motors the motors that need to be reversed and using the BL heli configurator I like this one, it's easy, uh, plus my uh, standard BL Heli 32 suite was uh, acting goofy, so uh, I try this one, you connect, you go ahead and read setup. Now my props are off, that is super important. Um, then I went ahead and click reversed on two and four, which are the two motors that I needed to uh, change. Now uh, I do also like to come in here and change some of these settings, these uh, beacon delay um, Make it two minutes, right? Then it just starts beeping. Uh, if it's been plugged in for two minutes and you haven't done anything, um, and then, uh, ah, gosh, I forget which one makes it louder, beep strength or beacon strength. We're just going to move them both up to 200. Uh, not quite 200, just make it a little bit louder, um, you know, just so you can hear it. Anyway, then you're going to click uh, right setup over here, and uh, we're going to go back into. Uh, Bid flight, make sure the motors are spinning correctly. Um, you know, again, props have to be off for all this stuff. I prefer uh, actually using a piece of paper. I put a piece of paper on uh, the propeller, or I'm sorry, on the motor, and let the uh, motor hit the propeller, make sure it uh, is spinning in the correct direction, and then we can go fly. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and uh, good luck and happy flying.